Hey guys, hope you well. Welcome to the first lesson of electricity. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about a whole bunch of things such as charge, current, uh, resistance, voltage, energy, all of these things, but I'm going to make it as easy as possible. We're going to spend a few minutes just talking about some of the basics, and then we're going to go straight into the calculations. And I promise you, as those calculations start, you're going to start seeing how easy this stuff actually is. Check this out. So the first thing I want to show you is this table. Now, at a first glance, that table looks a little scary, doesn't it? But it's okay. It's the first time you're seeing it. So you're going to get used to it. So the first thing I want to look at is something called current. Okay, current. So the symbol for current is I and the unit is amps. So for example, we're going to start looking at formulas a little bit later. And some of those formulas are going to have like an I in them. For example, um, I is equal to Q over T. So when you see the I, you must understand that that means current. Now, when you calculate the current and you go give the person, the teacher, the answer, you're going to say five amps, and that's what the unit is. So when you tell the teacher that the current is five amps, that's the unit, okay? So don't confuse unit and symbol. The symbol is what you use in the formula, like over here, and then the unit is when you are giving the answer. So it's you put it at the end of the answer end of answer. Now, for example, the next one is charge. So charge, we use a Q. And when you are giving the answer, you would use a C for Coulomb. Well, let me actually say that A stands for amps. Um, Q, C stands for Coulomb, like we saw with electrostatics. And then, so, so for example, you would say that the charge is equal to three coulombs like that. Okay, this is all going to make more sense as we do calculations in a few moments. Now time, we know time. Um, here we have it in the formula. So we use a t, but when you give the teacher the answer, you would say t is equal to maybe five seconds. I like to put a little line through it like that. So s is just seconds. Okay, you know the seconds we use in everyday life. Then voltage is pretty interesting because the symbol and the units are the same. So here's a formula that uses um, voltage, which we're going to look at in a few moments. So there's the voltage. But when you give the answer, you also use voltage. So that's pretty interesting. And you don't have to know these right now. You just need to try and memorize them for now. And as we use them in the examples, it's just going to become more familiar. It's like that with everything in life. Okay, now here's energy. So in the formula, you would use a W. But when you give the answer, let's say the answer is 10, you would say J, and that J actually stands for joules. Joules, that's how we measure energy, with joules. And then resistance, well, here's another formula that we're going to give you later on. Now you can see there's an R over there. That R stands for resistance. When you give this, when you tell the teacher what the answer is, you would say two, and then you would use this funny symbol, which actually stands for ohms. Okay, all good with me so far. You don't have to understand all of this right now, but just know that there's all these different things we're going to learn about, and you need to eventually understand what the symbol is, and you need to know what the units are. But that'll become more clear now in the next slide when we start doing examples. Now I'm going to show you three triangle formulas that you need to know. So the first one, um, so we're going to draw three triangles. And some of these formulas are going to be given to you in the exam, but eventually you'll just know them off by heart anyways. Okay, so you're going to make three triangles that look like that. Okay, then here you're going to say V, W, Q. Must be like that, okay? Um, the W must be at the top. Doesn't really matter if you put the V or Q left or right. And then the next one is going to be um, like that. And then the next one is going to be like that that. So you need to figure out a way that you're going to remember the, all of those. But what's important is what goes on the top. That is the most important part. Okay. And then whether you want to switch these two around, that's completely up to you. But let me show you how to use these triangle formulas now. Okay. Um, so let's start at the top one here. So let's say you're looking for W. So let's say you're looking for W. Then W you can see is at the top. So when you're looking for the one that's at the top, then you just multiply the ones that are at the bottom together. So if we use this one over here, you could say I 
multiplied by t and then try this one out for yourself you take the top one and you just multiply the two bottom ones together so whenever you're looking for the top one you're just going to multiply the two bottom parts together that's how those formulas work now if you are looking for let me just make that a bit more clear so can you see that the bottom ones are over there and then the bottom ones are over there and then the bottom ones are over there so it's always the top one is always equal to the bottom two multiplied together. Make sure you understand that. Now the next thing is if you are looking for this one, for example, so let's take the lower left one, then if you look at the other two, they are on top of each other. The W is at the top and the Q is at the bottom. So you would say V is equal to W at the top, Q is at the bottom. Try this one. So you would say I is equal, the Q is at the top, the T is at the bottom. So the Q is at the top, the T is at the bottom. And then try this one. So here the V is at the top and the R is at the bottom. So you'd say I is equal to V over R. Okay, I hope you guys are good so far. And then if you're looking for anything in the bottom right, well then you use the same approach that we just looked at, where the W is at the top and the V is at the bottom. So you would say that Q is equal to W over v or for this one you would say that t is equal to the thing that's at the top divided by the thing that's at the bottom and then for this one you would say r is equal to the thing that's at the top divided by the thing that's at the bottom. Okay, so it's super important that you understand how we did all of those formulas. Now you do not have to go and memorize every single one of these formulas, no. What you need to do is memorize these triangles, okay? And just remember which letter is at the top. And then these formulas will be easy to do because you'll know how the triangles work. So let's go do some calculations now and you are gonna see how easy these, um, once you understand these formulas, how easy these questions are actually gonna be. Hey guys, while editing this, I realized that I forgot that another name for voltage is sometimes given as potential difference. So let me just write that a bit better. Potential difference. Okay, so you're going to see that word used quite a few times. Then just remember that that's the same as voltage. So here's our first example. Now you need to have those three triangle formulas. So let's go write them down for ourselves. Um, they are so important. So we know that um, at the tops, we've got one that has a Q, we've got one that has a V, and then one has a W, okay? The one that has a Q has an I and a T at the bottom. This one has an I and an R, and then this one has a V and a Q. So have a look how easy these formulas are now. So we're gonna use this table together with these formulas. So it says a wire has electricity flowing in it. 5A, okay, so we've got current. Current is I. So we've just been given I, so let's go highlight all of that. Flows past a certain point in three minutes. Ah, that's time, because I know it's supposed to be in seconds, but I can change it. So we've got time as well, so we can use this one over here. Determine the amount of charge. They want us to calculate the charge. So they want us to find um, charge. They want us to find Q. Ah, okay. So then we just use this triangle over here because that triangle has the most information. Now there are gonna be questions that we're gonna do in a few moments where we're gonna have to use two triangles at the same time. So that's gonna get quite interesting. So make sure to stick around for that. But let's go have a look at this one. So we need to find charge. So we can say Q. Now remember how this formula works. The top one is always equal to the two at the bottom multiplied together. So charge is equal to five multiplied. But now this has to be in seconds. Can you see that? So three minutes is the same as three multiplied by 60, which is 180 seconds. So you're gonna use 180 seconds. Then if you go get the answer here, That'll be 900, but now you have to give the unit of charge, which is Coulomb, and there we go. So let's go do another example. So this question says, how long? Well, that means time, so how long? So how long is time? So we're looking for time, so let's just go highlight time. Um, would it take for four amps of current? So current is over here, so the symbol is an I. So we go highlight all of the I's. 
There we go. How long will it take for a current to transfer 1000 C? Now, what is 1000 C? Well, if you look at the C, that is charge, which has a symbol of Q. So we go highlight all of the Qs. And there we go. So we can literally just use this first triangle because it's got everything we need. But now we're looking for time. So remember, time is equal. Now you see that the Q is at the top and the I is at the bottom. So you're gonna say Q at the top, I at the bottom. So the, the Q is the 1000 and the I is the four amps. You see that's amps, current, I, and so that's gonna be four. And so that would be 250. Now, now what is the units of time? Well, that's seconds. I like to just put a line through there, otherwise it looks a bit weird sometimes. I mean, you can, I guess, do it like that. Just remember that that is um, seconds. And as I said, in a few examples, we're gonna be using more than one triangle at a time. Here's our next example. So 1000 J, or J stands for joules, which is energy. So that I'm gonna go highlight all of the Ws, okay? There's only one. When a current flows through a 4V, okay, so that's a voltage. So that means we've got a voltage. So I'm gonna go highlight all of the Vs. The process takes 30 seconds, okay? So we've got time as well, okay? So we've got time as well. Determine the current. Current is um, an I. So they want us to calculate this one. Okay, so now things are gonna be quite interesting. So you need to be able to see the link over here. So which triangle has the most information? Well, that would be this one. You see, we've got two pieces of green or information that we know. Um, you cannot work in this triangle because you don't know what the, you don't know what I is and you don't know what Q is. You can't work in this triangle because you don't, you, you do know what, uh, okay, you do know what that is, but you don't know what that is. But in this triangle, we can work in that triangle because we have this and we have this. So let's start with that triangle. So we're gonna say um, Q is equal. Now you look at whatever's at the top divided by whatever's at the bottom. Okay, and so Q is gonna be W, which is a thousand, that's W. Uh, this was V and this was I and this is T. So we're gonna say W, which is a thousand, over V, which is four, and that's gonna give you 250. But now what is the symbol for charge? Well, that is measured in Coulomb. Now we have Q, guys. So check this out, now we have Q. Ah, so now we can use this triangle because now these two pieces of information are known. And so now we can say that I is equal to the number, whatever's at the top divided by whatever's at the bottom. And so I is gonna be Q, which is now 250, divided by the time, which is 30. And if we work that out, to two decimal places, we get eight, 0.33. Now, what is the symbol for current? Well, that is measured in amps. How cool is this stuff, guys? Once you get the triangles and you understand these symbols and these units, it becomes super fun. Okay, let's try another one. So here we have 30 joules of energy. Okay, so that's this one. So that's a W. Okay, so we go highlight all the Ws is transferred when a 12C charge, okay, so we have charge as well, which is a Q, so let's go highlight all the Qs, okay. Moves through a light bulb. Calculate the potential difference. So potential difference is this one here, so that's a V, so they would like us to calculate V. Ah, so this triangle, we can just use that in immediately. So we say V is equal to, now it's the top, top of the triangle, divided by the bottom of the triangle, like I showed in the beginning of the lesson. So we're gonna say W over Q. And so the W and the Q. So W is gonna be 30, Q is gonna be 12. And so if you had to work that out, you end up with 2.5 and the units is also gonna be volts. Let's go and do three more examples. So with this one, it says how much energy. Okay, so they're looking for energy. Now energy is W. Okay, so that's what they're looking for. Is transferred to move a charge. So we have the charge. Now charge is a Q. Okay, so we have the Q. Through a potential difference of six. Okay, so we have the potential difference, which is V. So we can highlight that and that. Okay, so we can just use that triangle. So sometimes we need to only use one. Uh, triangle, um, sometimes we need to use two. So you need to know how to write your formula. So W is at the top. You see it's at the top. 
So that means you're gonna multiply the two bottom parts together. That's important that you know that. Now, voltage is six and the charge is six, and so that'll be 36. But to get full marks, you also need to know the unit, and that would be joules. Two more examples. A current of 0 0.5. Okay, so we have the current, which is I, so let's go highlight that, is a uh, current flows a second. How much coulomb, okay, so how much charge, that's what they're looking for. So they're looking for the coulomb of charge. Now charge is a Q, so that's what they want. Moves past a certain point in the circuit in 20 seconds. Okay, so they've told us 20 seconds, so that's the time. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we can just use that formula or that triangle. So make sure you know how to use the triangle. The Q is at the top, so you multiply the two bottom parts together. And so Q is gonna be um, 0, 0,5 multiplied by T, which is 20, and that's gonna give you 10. 10 what? Coulomb. You must remember, you must have the symbol and you must have the unit. Let's do one more example. Ooh, so this is quite nice. So a current of two amps. So they've given us the current. Now remember current is I, so we go highlight all the I's, because we don't know which one we're gonna have to use. Flows through a resistor, ooh, we haven't used that before, of four, there we go. Now the first question says determine the potential difference, which is a V, so we go highlight all the V's. Okay, so we can just use that triangle. And so V is at the top, so you just multiply the two bottom parts together. And so I is two, R is four, and so that would be eight. Eight what? Volts. Okay, so we have the first answer as eight volts. So now we can go and highlight all of the Vs in the triangle, okay? Because we have the voltage now. The next question says how much charge? Okay, so Q, what is the Q? How much charge? will flow through the resistor in 10 minutes. Okay, so they're giving us the time. So we have the time, so we can go highlight the time. Uh, time is, oh yeah, we've got that one. And then it says how much, how much charge will flow. Okay, so they're looking for charge. So charge is um, a Q. So that means this triangle would work perfectly because we can then just say Q is equal to I multiplied by T. And so the charge is I, which is two amps, remember? And then the time, be careful now, that's 10 minutes. So you've got to multiply that by 60 to end up with 600 seconds, okay? So 600 seconds. And if you had to go work that, you end up with 1,200 Coulomb. So now we have the charge. So we now have the charge. So let's just go highlight that. And now they say how much joules of energy will be transferred. So now they want the joules of energy. So energy is a W. So we would use this triangle now. And so W, because it's at the top, you're gonna say V multiplied by Q. And so W is gonna be the voltage, which we got earlier as eight, and the charge, which we've just calculated as 1,200. And so if you had to go and calculate this, you end up with 9,600. And then the units for, for W is, or for energy, is joules.